Welcome everyone to today's session. What's next for GoGN? Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to um to be able to share uh our kind of plans for um the next phase of GoGN um, with you and also to discuss them with you um today. So um without further ado, I'm gonna hand over. I think Martin, are you gonna are you happy to Yeah, I'll do the first one. So yeah, hi, perfect. Everyone. Yeah, thanks. So we can join a bit. There we are. Uh, so you probably all know this stuff, but we thought we'd just reiterate the aims of GoGN and where we are sort of the current membership. Um, so what is GoGN? So we've kind of got four aims in the current uh, phase of the project. Uh, it's probably worth coming to this a bit more, but we got a new grant for GoGN back in April for another um, three years. So we're in phase four of GoGN now. Um, and so the, the aims have remained largely the same, but we sort of tweaked them a bit each time. So the sort of overriding one has always been to raise the profile of research into open education. Uh, and we do this mainly through, as you will, will know, of support for those conducting doctoral level research. That's kind of been the main focus. Um, perhaps one that we've sort of brought to the fore more over the past um, few iterations is promote equity and inclusion in the field of uh, OER research. Uh, and also one we've tried to sort of promote from the start is to develop openness as a process of research. It's not just researching into open, but being open in your practice as well as, as you do that. Oops. So I think you all know the team. Um, I'm director of GoGN. Uh, there's Beck, um, who's in charge of comms and um, uh, webinars and uh, Memberships. Rob's in charge of outputs, um, uh, research outputs. Uh, roughly, we all do bits and bobs across all of these things, but kind of roughly is what people lean on. Uh, Crane's in charge of the EDI stream, and Carly's a project manager. So currently, the network stands with uh, 52 members, um, and I'm since 2016. Um, oh, sorry, with this how far much we've grown. So we had 20. 50 members, 174 members um, in as of now. Um, 27 different countries around the world. Um, and I think one of the interesting things is we've kind of grown that alumni. Um, a few of you are here, uh, alumni, good to see you. you know, so people have come through the process. I remember when we started, it was, I remember when we got our first alumni. It's like, well, hey, someone's come all the way through. And now we have kind of a good percentage. Of, and those people have often gone on to be very influential in the field. Um, and so uh, we had to probably, we have certain metrics that we promise uh, uh, Hewlett Foundation, and we've always exceeded those in terms of uh, percentage increase, a 235% increase in members. Um, and I think we we try to increase that membership, but whilst also retaining our mission. So we do get applications from people who are, you know, who want to join the network, but, you know, their research is in tractor technology or something you know and, you know it's just not related to open education at all so we try we try to retain the kind of you know i'm not i'm not this this in tractor technology by the way <laughs> perhaps it's good open tractor technology but you know we try to retain the kind of focus and the core of what of what um gojen is about so that when people do connect with each other they kind of have meaningful connections um am i doing this back or is this you i think it's on to me now isn't it I guess on to you, Kylie. Yes, that's right. Good, thank you. Over to Kylie for thank review. You. I'll let you still click away, so. Ooh. We've had quite another busy year of uh, 2023. Uh, so we kick-started off the year with um, a webinar from Professor Ebert Rosanna Nilsson. Um, so he was the winner of the OE Awards for Excellent Leadership Award in 2022. Um, and then Paco and Karina went off to Monterey, uh, Mexico, and participated in a number of events over there, and also gained us a few more um, GoGNs along the way, which was good. Uh, February-wise, uh, the GoGN EDI guidelines were published and launched at the webinar, so that so fed in nicely, and they can be reread on our website as well. Um, had a couple of um, webinar research specials in March. Uh, April was a bit of a busy month for us with the publication of the GoGN Open Research Handbook. And then we were on to our in-person workshop 
that backseat on the OER 23 conference in Inverness, Scotland. So we had 12 funded applicants that came along with us, along with a couple of others as well, um, and then rounded up with another webinar at the end of the month. And this was followed up by a Wikipedia special in May. And in June, we participated in quite a few presentations and conferences along the way. And into July, here we go. Um, Adrian Stead presented um, the ecology of OP, OEP in Australian higher education. Uh, throughout the month of August, Martin provided us a three-part GoGN special set of episodes to celebrate 10 years of GoGN. Um, so these can be found on most podcast uh, providers or Martin's blog. Um, so this included and covered a wide range of memories and work involved and all of the in-between that comes with it. Uh, in September, we had an article published. I wasn't sure if that was you or Karina, was it you or Paco or both of you on that one? Might be. Uh, it was, it was uh, a paper about the fellowship of research as a little scholarship uh, um, uh, project that Paco and the team ran. So we published then a paper about that. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I'd made sure I covered everybody on who worked on it. Um, October, as we know, was an extremely busy but rewarding month for us in terms of the OE Global Conference and the 10th anniversary special, which will be covered more shortly. And that didn't stop there. We had Beck then going off to present again and um, sent Karina off to boot camp. And uh, just gluttons for punishment for traveling. Um, in November, Rob presented at the Open Education Conference and also the member research special uh, seven. Yeah, number seven was out with Helen and Gabby. Um, and that leads us on to this month. So this sees us with a strategic refresh and what is next for us? Thanks so much, Kylie. Um, yeah, so as Kylie mentioned, um, 10th anniversary, this year has been our 10th anniversary year. Um, next slide, please. Thanks, Martin. Um, perfect. So yeah, so um, this year has been our 10th anniversary year. So um, as Kylie mentioned, there's been um, podcast series and a load of other activity that's been happening across the year to celebrate our 10th anniversary, including especially um, in October, our two day workshop that was um, uh, that ha happened before um, the OE Global uh, Conference. So, um, yeah, it was a really wonderful opportunity to bring together both um, alumni and members um, from throughout the kind of history of GoGN throughout the kind of 10 years together. Um, uh, in Edmonton, Canada, and I know some people are on the call as well who were who were participating, which is fantastic. Um, next slide, please. We've had a really, really fantastic response to the opportunity to participate in the 10th anniversary workshop. So we had 25% of our membership participate, um, which was really fantastic, but obviously meant a lot of really difficult um, decisions about um, about who to bring to the workshop. We were very lucky and um, we received additional um, funding and support from the Hewlett Foundation to um, make this event um, our biggest workshop ever in the history of GoGN, I think, um, with around 30 of our members and alumni um, from 13 countries, both online and face-to-face -face in Edmonton. So it really was um, a fantastic um, event um, across the two days. Next slide, please. So these are some photos from the event, just so that if you um, weren't lucky enough to be there in person, um, you can get a sense of, um, of some of the activities and the things that we were kind of doing together. So we were really lucky to have um, Professor Robert Schwer um, with us um, to talk about uh, the history of GoGN. Um, that presentation, we did have a live stream. Um, uh, I know some of you were able to join the live stream on the Friday. Um, for our kind of presentations or some of the presentations that were happening, but also for Robert's um, presentation about the history of GoGN. I'll pop the link in the chat there. Apologies, it, it's not on the um, on screen here. I'll, I'll share that shortly. Um, 
firstly, the first day we really spent kind of getting to know each other, um, doing activities, kind of finding out a bit more about each other's research. We did a kind of PhD metaphors activity, which you can see some pictures of everyone on the left hand side here. And um, we also had our keynote from Robert that day, followed by an afternoon of workshops and presentations from um, participants, which was really fantastic. On the second day, we were lucky enough to have our program officer from Hewlett Foundation with us, um, Dr. Angela DeBarger, um, and she did a really fantastic Q&A session. Um, and we also spent um, quite a lot of the day involved in co-creating um, um, and working on the kind of strategic um, uh, working around the kind of strategic vision for GoGN as well. And Rob um, will come on and talk a little bit more about that output, um, which has been opened up recently for wider network contribution um, as well. So yeah, just a really fantastic um, two days prior to the conference. Um, we also had a really strong representation um, at the OE Global Conference itself um, with a number of um, uh, speakers from the network, as well as partnering for that conference and OER23 earlier in the year. Um, and you can check out some of the conversations on social using the, uh, the, the hashtag there as well. Um, I'll pop some links in the chat um, shortly. Perfect. Thanks. So I'll now hand over, I think, um, yeah, to Martin. Thanks. Okay, so, yeah, so as I mentioned, we uh, went into phase four this year. Um, thanks to the Hewlett Foundation. Um, always good to uh, have money from them. But I think it's also a testament, I think, to kind of the the, the power of the members. I think you know, Angela uh, and um, TJ before her kind of always been impressed when they've come to conferences and met the members. So as Beck said, Angela came to um, the full two days of the workshop and uh, kind of really participated. And I think they find it really valuable to have that global network to kind of draw on. Um, so the sort of focus we have for this phase was to expand the network while um, still sort of finding ways to effectively support it. I think that's interesting because we've kind of got to a certain size now, which is, you know, when the network's 50 people, you can sort of know everybody in it pretty much and make sure that you support them. We'll be getting to a slightly bigger phase now and whether that, you know, it gets, it sort of begins to stretch that original model a bit. I think we're trying to make sure we can still support people while also sort of expanding it. Uh, explore approaches that can increase diversity of membership and particularly uh, membership from the global south. Uh, Queen is going to come and talk about some of the uh, EDI strand on that. Um, use different approaches to increase the reach and reputation of GoGen. And we'll talk a bit about one of the ideas, which is around different scholarships we're going to try and offer people. Uh, and also some of the um, research sprints that Rob's going to talk about. And also explore how uh, our activities uh, such as re resource and research can better support the wider community. So I think we've kind of got to a stage now where the network itself is quite a powerful network and community that we can draw upon. And, and we saw that with some of the uh, guides that we produced over the past phase with the particularly the uh, research methodology and conceptual frameworks reports, which were co-produced with members. Now, that was kind of really powerful. I think now we've got to the stage where you know, we can really use the network and and help sort of contribute back to the to the, broad, the broader um, community. Um, so we're going to try and um, continue to support our membership. So we're going to still do the things we've always done, the sort of face-to-face -face, uh, workshops. So we've got one coming up in OER 24 that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so Rob's going to talk about the idea of these research sprints, the increasing these collaborative research activities. Um, and also try and, I think we want to try and make, um, not better use of, but try and engage in a better way, I think, a more meaningful way with the sort of wider community. So we have uh, GoGN members, which are people who are doing a PhD or alumni. We also have what we call GoGN friends, people who sort of, you know, that might be uh, academics or people who are just interested in the topic and sort of trying to uh, draw upon them as well, I think, a bit more. And as mentioned, uh, work on our EDI work uh, and Take that further. So we've got uh, some activities that we undertake, so uh, events and communications, and Beck leads on that. So we do the monthly webinar series. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll probably get the monthly newsletter from us, um, as well as the actual sort of face-to-face -face events. The research outputs and sprints, which Rob will talk about. This idea of scholarships, we did fellowships before, but I'll, we'll come on to scholarships uh, later. So we, we slightly tweaked what we're going to do with that and the EDI work. So uh, 
on to the first of those. I think Beck's going to take us through uh, events and communications. Thanks so much, Martin. Um, that's fantastic. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. Wonderful. So yeah, as Martin mentioned, um, the monthly um, online sessions, um, our monthly webinars will be continuing um, uh, as probably um, uh, you were aware over the past few years with the COVID pandemic, we kind of changed up slightly um, in terms of what we're, we offer in terms of online events. So we're going to continue um, with those and with things like the member research special as well. Um, so as Kylie mentioned, we've just had our seventh one of those. We will be having another one in um, the new year uh, as well, um, kind of um, March, April time. Um, we're also going to be, um, as Martin mentioned, kind of looking at ways to engage um, and connect our experts and friends network with um, the kind of GoGN member and alumni um, as well. And one of the ways in which we're going to um, be doing that is through inviting our experts and friends to talk about their research um, as well. And the first of those specials will be happening in January um, 2024. Um, as was mentioned, face-to-face um, -face workshops. So um, we did have a break for a couple of years, obviously, with the pandemic and then kind of started to ease back into our face-to-face -face activity um, last year um, with uh, the OER conference and then again with OER 23 and, of course, our 10th anniversary workshop this year. Um, next year, as Martin mentioned, we'll be heading to Cork Island um, in April for... Uh, no, at the end of March, sorry, um, for... Um, uh, a face-to-face -face workshop prior to that uh, conference. So um, thank you. Uh, we've had a really tremendous response as well um, to that workshop opportunity, and we'll be in touch with um, everyone shortly regarding um, that. We'll also be opening a call in the new year for um, OE Global, um, and we'll be holding a workshop um, prior to uh, that conference um, happening towards the end of the year in Brisbane, um, Australia. So please keep a lookout for that um, in the new year. We'll be continuing, as Martin mentioned, our regular communications. Um, and uh, again, based on the feedback that we're getting around both the web, uh, around the webinars, around the face-to-face -face opportunities and the newsletter, these seem to be things um, that that people um, on the whole are, are, are pleased and, um, and, uh, and happy with. Um, so we'll be continuing our regular newsletters um, going out to our membership um, uh, every month or so. Um, we're looking primarily to kind of change it up with um, the way in which we um, communicate. So as you know, we've got um, we've got a presence on Twitter um, and Facebook. We also have the WhatsApp group. Um, we're looking really now to kind of, with the changes that have happened over the past year, kind of, and thinking about how to better connect our kind of friends and experts with our members and alumni as well. Um, we're thinking about using Discord or we will be looking to trial using Discord as a way of kind of enabling people to have conversations outside of the kind of face to face workshops um, in, in our kind of own space. And we trialed this during the 10th anniversary um, workshop um, as well. So folks that um, came to Edmonton, Canada, um, we did have a Discord space for people to be able to connect prior to the workshop. Um, which worked um, fairly, which worked quite well. So we're looking to kind of um, make that something for the wider network. And so that also our experts and friends can kind of um, be part of those kind of conversations and people can connect directly um, with each other. We'll be maintaining um, a presence on um, Twitter um, and Facebook, but we're also looking to introduce um, a LinkedIn um, space as well. So please do um, look out for us um, appearing on LinkedIn um, in the new year. Um, and I'll update, every, we'll update everybody um, in the new year via the newsletter um, about those, about that going forward. Um, we're also going to be doing a refresh of our members pack. So um, if you, um, you may or if you're a recent member, you would have received um, our member pack. Um, so we'll be doing a refresh of that and sharing that across the network as well so that everyone is aware of the kind of opportunities that the network offers and the different ways that we can um, connect uh, with um, each other. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. So I just wanted to pause, actually, and just, um, yeah, get any thoughts from um, folks on the call um, about those um, 
yeah, about communication and, and, and event plans, whether anybody had any particular comment that they wanted to share at this point. Um, great. So thanks everyone for your comments. That's great. So I'm getting some thumbs up for Discord here. So that's that's good. Um, so we'll be looking to launch that in the new year. So look out for more on that. And um, yeah, please continue. Um, if anyone else has any comments or feedback about those plans, just pop it in the chat and then we can also come back uh, to that. I'm conscious of time though. So I'm going to hand over now um, to uh, Rob, who's going to talk about the research outputs and sprints. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'm going to take us through some of the ideas for the next year um, around research outputs. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, so you'll probably be familiar with some of the collaborative writing activities from phase three of GoGN, uh, which you can see here at the top. And these have been pretty successful on the whole um, in terms of meeting the objectives that we had when we set out to do them, um, both in terms of them being kind of useful things to you know share with people, but also to coordinate member activity and network activity. Um, and so these resources from the early phase, most of them at least, are consolidated now into the Open Research Handbook, which is on the next slide. Um, so, um, so all those phase three outputs have been put into one volume. And the idea is going forward that as we add new stuff or we find openly licensed stuff that's relevant, we can keep updating this handbook and kind of there'll always be the sort of latest version available. Um, we didn't actually produce um, a new guide in 2023. Um, the focus was on consolidating into the handbook, but also because of the grant schedule, we had a bit of a gap in the summer. And we weren't necessarily you know, sure that we'd have the capacity to do a full guide in that time. Um, but we do have some plans. Um, can I the next slide, please? Uh, so as Beck said, we had our 10 year anniversary workshop where there was um, a lot of focus on strategic direction and, and vision and thinking about the next 10 years. Um, and so um, we're producing um, an output based on this. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So yeah, as Beck said, we had these various activities um, where we were asking people to think about their experiences over the last 10 years and think about what might 2033 look like what kind of things are important now going forward, where do we need to put some focus? And also thinking about some of the stuff that Martin was talking about with regards to the maturity of the network, changing circumstances, um, the sort of question around size and whether we need to sort of change what we're doing a little bit um, to be able to support more people and what the expect expectations are and all that sort of stuff. Um, so uh, come to the next slide, please. So basically um, we've got stuff right we've got about 30 40 pages of stuff from people and um, i'm currently putting that together into um, a document i'm aiming to have it ready for in the new year when it will go out for open review to the whole network for further input hopefully it's a bit easier to engage with when you've got a draft already there as well and you can sort of see you know i could just add this little bit here add your own perspective so it's an ongoing thing and we're going to try and get some more input as we go along um, but hopefully we'll have a draft ready to go at the start of 2024. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, look out for that one. Um, we do have our next guide, GoGN guide planned. And this is one that we've spoken about before in different events and stuff like that. Um, and this is a guide focused on doctoral supervision, the doctoral supervision process. And um, it's something that people often ask us about. And um, for those of you who've already been through the sort of doctoral process, it's something that you can often feel a bit uncertain about, especially, you know, at the start, like what's supposed to be happening. Um, there's also an idea here that we can get engagement from our non-doctoral student members. So our wider expert and friends network, many of whom are PhD supervisors. So the timing on this, the idea is um, to kickstart the process around the time of OER 24 possibly doing something in the workshop with people to kind of just do a bit of needs capture around it. Um, but then um, there's this conference on PhD supervision later in the year in Sweden. And I've been in touch with the organizers and what the what I'm thinking at the moment is if we can go to this conference with a draft, might be a fairly rough draft, but something that these um, experienced supervisors can engage with, 
we might get a, a chance to get a good input and validation for the uh, guide from that event and maybe do a workshop at that event, which wouldn't necessarily be a GoGN workshop, but it would be um, from, a, you know, obviously it's very focused on supervision at this conference. So it seems like a good fit. Um, so yeah, look out for that um, in the summer, basically. Um, it's not just for people who supervise to have input on this. I think the, the student perspective is also important. Um, so there will be opportunities to get involved in that one. And if you have ideas for things you'd like to see in that, then um, get in touch and let us know. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so in January, we also want to start the sprints, um, which I've been talking about for a while now, but we're sort of in a position to get going with. And um, there's a blog post on the idea behind this on the website if you want more detail. But the, the central idea is how do we leverage the network in meaningful ways, um, in the same way we do for writing these guides and so on, but in a more agile way and a way that we can kind of bring to bear on specific um, objectives um, over a short period of time. So we're calling these sprints, and it's, it's a little bit similar to the kind of um, software development sprint idea, but it's, you know, not exactly that. So we're not having scrums and scrum masters and all that, but we will be inviting people to basically take over the network for a short amount of time, tell, tell people what you'd like them to do, um, share the thing that you're trying to um, progress, you know, and it could be a research thing, it could be an advocacy thing, whatever it might be. So we're going to start off um, with open education and AI in January. And then uh, I'll talk a bit about what we're going to do in a second. And then we've got another one plugged in for just after that, two weeks. We've had um, a suggestion for a special issue submission um where it's um it's in bjet so it's in a good journal there's a good long lead in on it and it's all about internationalization in higher education and so we obviously have a lot of different perspectives that can be brought to bear on this uh question so um so we'll pick up the thread of that in january um as well but then after that if you want to suggest something and you've got an idea of something you want to explore in the context of a sprint then um, we're, we're all ears. Um, come to the next slide, please. Uh, so on this uh, OE, open education and AI concept, um, so this is something that I'm already basically working on because um, I think it's quite an important and emerging area. Um, and for the sprint, I was thinking, because obviously we haven't done one of these before, right? I'm not sure how many people will commit and how much time they'll be able to commit and that kind of thing. But what we could do is crowdsource a bibliography and consolidate all the kind of decent references that we've found around AI stuff recently. Um, and maybe map out some of those key tensions, work out what the key issues are, maybe what the key research questions are, um, but do it in a kind of collaborative way. And I guess partly the idea would be how can we work out where there's um, further scope for doing research, maybe getting some funding, different forms of collaboration, um, personally, I think there's a there's a need for a sort of authentically open voice in what's happening around AI and education, and it could be GoGN that provides it. Um, so we'll spend about four weeks um, focusing on this in January, roughly from the 15th onwards. Could the next slide, please? Um, you may be aware that I'm co-editing a special issue of sustainability on this theme. Um, the deadline for those papers is the 6th of March. We have some fee waivers available and it's kind of first come, first served. So um, another way to look at this sprint is if you've got a paper you're developing on this theme, then we can kind of work on that in the context of the sprint. Um, can the next slide, please? Um, and also related to this theme, we have a funded PhD place at the OU. Um, it's through the Faculty of Wellbeing, Education and Language Studies, which um, all of the uh, GoGN team sit within. And um, it'd be working directly with some of us as supervisors. If you know anyone who's interested in this stuff, uh, it's a fully funded position. The deadline is the 31st of January for an application. Um, so uh, get on it, basically. And um, if you've got any questions about it, drop me a line. Um, but again, there's a nice fit here with the with the sprint. Uh, and the other aspect of this, which you might be interested in, is I have a submission in for OER 24, which is around um, open education and AI. 
And the idea is to, to write 10 explosive propositions. So by explosive, I mean, I guess, controversial, high impact, surprising. Um, and I'm kind of trying to tweak these to make them as explosive as possible. So this is a sort of sub theme for this sprint is like, can we make these propositions more explosive? Um, and I'm, I'm assuming I'll be presenting this stuff at OER 24. Um, so that's another thing that you might be interested in. Have the next slide, please. Um, just a bit of detail on this uh, BJET submission on internationalization. Uh, Jenna Mistelmeyer is uh, a friend of ours through uh, the Open University, currently the University of Manchester. Um, she su supported some uh, GoGN stuff in the past. Um, so this is a good opportunity, I think, uh, for the network um, to have a sort of collective publication around internationalization. I'm not sure who should lead it. I'm not sure that it should be one of the coordinators necessarily but that's partly what the sprint will hopefully determine. Um, but the abstract for that is the 16th of February. So it's a nice lead in. Um, have next slide, please. Um, so yeah, so I'd, I'll just leave you with this kind of question um, around potentially having a sprint for your own purposes later in 2024. What would you be able to contribute to? How would you uh, use the resources of the network um, to facilitate that? Uh, we're open to any suggestions, any length of time, um, and it's all quite exploratory. So if you think think of a way to use the network, get in touch. Thanks, Rob. I guess that's uh, my section. Um, okay, so moving on to scholarships then. Um, next slide, Martin. So as Martin has previously mentioned um, at the beginning of today, um, the scholarships are basically a new version of the fellowships, which it was which it ran for a couple of years. Uh, uh, and we provided then uh, uh, the fellowship or the funding for alumni to then, you know, continue their research or disseminate further their research, uh, develop their careers further. But now moving to scholarships, we will then include also PhD students, colleagues doing, you know, their, their research. Uh, we will prioritize Global South members and alumni um, and the program will fund, so these are some of the things that the program, the scholarship will fund going forward, financial support and resources to attend conferences, uh, raise awareness of the network, so it's also shifting and trying to engage members uh, 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 um, uh, to help promote the, the, the network, GoGN. Um, support to support new research proposals and ones related to the candidate, the participant's PhD. So there are some options there. This is not, you know, this is some scope, but it could it could uh, uh, go beyond that, and we will assess then as we uh, uh, receive the proposals. Um, we will send more details next year, early next year, in terms of you know the the deadlines. Open up the when registration, when proposals will be start to being submitted. So when we will start receiving those proposals, and when proposals will be assessed as well. But it is more on a ad hoc basis where we will assess those proposals as they come. So then there isn't just you know. Uh, 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 um, a block per year, so it, this is more, uh, uh, and also could fit within candidates' uh, research uh, uh, and conferences. So it, it have uh, can fit their schedule a lot better than than just have a set date the way we were having before. So these are some of the news about the scholarships going forward. Also for the EDI, the equity, diversity and inclusion strand in, in, in GoGN moving forward. Well, from last year, we will first talk about 2023. It has been very busy. As you can see, we have all been very busy. Uh, um, and across the year, 2023, we have been, we have presented 
several places uh, um, and disseminated this research further and be invited to talk as well. So we received a couple of invitations. One was the boot camp in Spain um, and another one, we have a, a presentation uh, for the Hewlett Foundation on Thursday this week. So, um, which is which is really, really nice um, um, to have this invitation. So, um, all this dissemination it will be available uh, in the annual review, in the annual report we are preparing. But for uh, here, we just put you know uh, the key publications. We have the guidelines, obviously, that has been published earlier February this year, and more recently, Paco and I uh, um, had a paper published in the Distance Education Journal just before the end of the year. What a great way to end the year with a, another paper published. Um, we all, were also very happy to be shortlisted for the special awards in the OE in the o Open Education Awards for Excellence. So we were in the, you know, the special awards category um, in diversity, equity, and inclusion. So there were four of us and we were, we were not selected, but we were shortlisted, which we found we were happy anyway. So going forward, EDI is now part of one of the work packages uh, uh, in phase four for GoGN moving forward. So we will continue looking in the global south. And after some discussions, we have decided to look at the Asian region, and it is a huge region, uh, and that's why it's not possible to look at everything in one year. So the idea is to then uh, divide the region in three years, and each year then investigates some countries within that region region sorry um we are also planning to have a meeting so the module the methodology used uh um for this will be similar to previous ones where interviews will be done online and we will try to meet face to face um and one way to do that is perhaps link those meetings to a conference and the next one we would like to link uh, um the next meeting we would like to link to the OE Global, which is going to happen in Australia. And Australia, you know, there is a region where, where they call Australasia. So there are a lot of links with, you know, Southern and Southeast Asian. So hopefully we will help, we will manage to uh, uh, link that, you know, that event to some of the interviews or focus groups for folks that might be interested in attending OE Global. So this is, these are the plans moving forward uh, uh, for the EDI um, work stream. Thanks, Beck. Thanks so much, Karina. That's fantastic. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, looking forward into 2024. Um, yeah, we've got, I hope, um, you're as excited as we are for some of our plans over the next um, uh, year or so. Um, as was mentioned by Karina, we're going to launch our GoGN scholarship scheme um, early next year. So please look out um, for that. Um, and also our call for OE Global um, happening later in the year, as you can see here. Um, we're also going to have the OEP and AI sprint that was mentioned by Rob, as well as the BIRA and BJET internationalization paper sprint. So yeah, busy um, start to the year. Um, as I mentioned, we've got our experts and friends research special happening um, in the middle of January time. So please look out for details um, on that. We've currently got two um, fantastic um, speakers uh, lined up for that, um, Javier and Leslie. So we're really looking forward to hearing more about their research in that session. Um, and then also coming up at the end of March, um, we'll have our GoGN workshop prior to OER 24 in Cork. So really looking forward um, to uh, meeting face-to-face um, -face again um, with some of our GoGN members um, and alumni um, then. During April to June, we've got our members research special. So that's happening in April. Um, this will be our eighth member research special, um, as um, mentioned earlier uh, in today's session. These have been really, I think, um, a great 
way for uh, our members and alumni to showcase their research with the wider network. So yeah, if you are on the call and you are interested in um, sharing what you're doing, um, it doesn't have to be a long presentation, um, uh, we're totally flexible, um, then just drop us an email and let us know. Um, we do have some spots uh, uh, open for that. And then we'll be drafting, as Rob mentioned, um, the GOGN Guide to Research Supervision. Um, and then also, as we look towards the autumn as well, uh, we've got Open Ed um, 2024 and, um, as we was mentioned, OE Global happening in Brisbane as well. So, yeah, a busy 2024 on the back of a, a busy 2023, which is fantastic. Um, next slide, please. Wonderful. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for um, listening um, and your contributions as well in the chat and, and earlier in the session. We've now got time for questions um, and feedback and would really love to hear from you. Um...